<laughs> Hi, everyone. Your host here, I'm Celeste Davis, and this is another episode of Ladies on a Roll. Today, we're going to talk about the movie Uncle Buck. Yeah! <laughs> That movie's been around for over 30 years now. I cannot believe that. Oh, wow. And it's a great movie. I think a lot of us saw that movie growing up. Before we get started, help me out and subscribe to my channel. Whether you're watching me on YouTube or listening to me on a podcast app such as Amazon Music or Apple or Spotify, or any of your favorite podcast channels, please hit that subscribe link because... It wouldn't be any fun without you. I, I would miss you. So hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So today's episode is about Uncle Buck. As I mentioned, it's been 30 plus years since it aired. And it is a cute and great movie starring John Candy, who was just uh, about the peak of his career at this point with, uh, with this particular movie. He had just done plane trains and automobiles before this and it was really helping him and his career just totally skyrocket now if you didn't know anything about uncle buck i'll just give you or maybe you forgot i kind of forgot like the whole premise because i i don't know i just kind of forgot the whole premise so i had to rewatch the whole thing again but uncle buck is about this very uh, just goofy guy in life who doesn't quite have his act together you know he He's just kind of living on a shoestring life and just kind of barely getting by. You know, he has all these different schemes of how he makes money. Um, you know, of course, he doesn't live very clean. He's a little bit of a slob, has a, a girlfriend as well. And, you know, she's just trying to get him to settle down. So meanwhile, his put together brother and his sister-in-law have three children out in the suburbs of somewhere. And... Um, his sister-in-law has a family emergency. Her, her father has some type of medical emergency and she's got to get to go see him as soon as possible. They can't get a hold of anybody in the night, like their neighbors or friends. And so they go to Uncle Buck, you know, the, the guy's brother. And you're like, oh no, what's wrong with Uncle Buck? And there's nothing wrong with him. He's just a sweet guy who's, he's got a great heart, you know? And I, I think that's what ends up uh, with John Candy adding to the character is that even though the guy's just kind of this goofy, not put together guy, he has a heart of gold, you know, like he is so heartwarming and so charming that, yeah, everybody wants to have Uncle Buck as their uncle, you know, he, he ends up being very sweet. So Buck shows up in the middle of the night and it, and it you know, gets the, the angsty teenager mad and uh, we deal, we start dealing with all of that. So the great thing about this movie is that it launches Macaulay Culkin's uh, movie career. I mean, he took off after this movie. The director and writer for this movie, John Hughes, ended up liking Macaulay so much, he basically wrote Home Alone for him because he had such great talent and and great timing too, you know, with his comedy timing. So for such a little kid, oh my gosh, he was so fun. And plus, oh, how cute was Macaulay back then? Oh, I mean, he's, he's an okay guy now, but he was just a cute, cute kid. Smart as a whip too. So I don't think people say smart as a whip anymore, do they? I don't know. Maybe I'm dating myself. So there were so many funny scenes to choose from. I... I really could not pick out what was my favorite scene because everything was really funny from the car always backfiring. Um, gosh, that car. I swear we all knew that car, right? We all had that, had that friend or family or dad who had a car that was just just rattle and then boom, all the smoke comes flying out of it, you know? Um, so the car was funny to me. I liked uh, that one interrogation scene between John Candy and Macaulay Culkin, where Macaulay's character is asking John Candy a lot of questions about who he is because he doesn't know him as an uncle. And that's such a cute, cute scene. I 
I found out later that um, Macaulay was having difficulties with that scene. And so what John Candy did is he just taped the questions right here on his forehead. And if you look, you can actually see in that scene that Macaulay's actually kind of reading it a little bit with his eyes. So I thought that was cute. And he said he did that to help him out. There's a lot of stories, too, about John Candy being really nice to all the other actors on stage and, and being really really nice to work with and he did nice things for them as well my other favorite scenes are with um any scene with john candy and the actor jay underwood who plays bug um those scenes were always funny you know bug leans down in the window and he goes oh, <laughs> have you ever heard of a tune-up and then john candy leans back and goes uh -huh, uh -huh. you ever heard of a ritual killing uh -huh, uh -huh. And I just thought, you know, I thought that was so funny because you could not threaten teenagers today with that type of thing. They would probably sue you or record you or put, put it on social media or something like that. But it was a funny scene. And I think that as an adult now, looking back on that scene, I mean, I think we wish we could say stuff like that to teenagers when they're being annoying, you know. The other scene that is actually really funny between John Candy and Bug is uh <laughs> is when he catches them in the room with what he thinks is Tia and he he drills the the door lock and then busts in and it turns out it's not Tia it ends up being another girl but he ends up kidnapping him and throwing him in the trunk and then he finds Tia walking down the street and picks her up and then admits to her like hey I've I've got that loser in the trunk. Let's go torment him some more. So she gets all excited about that. So I think those were some really funny scenes. You know, I, I really liked that interaction and uh, Jay's character. Just, I don't know. It was a really good combination there. So I really liked it. So let's talk about some of the discrepancies in this movie. Even though there were discrepancies in this movie, I still, I still really enjoyed the movie. I mean, this movie, you can't go wrong with. You really couldn't. It, it's such a cute, endearing movie that even with the little flubs and stuff and the inconsistencies, you'll still really like it. One of the scenes that happens that there's a discrepancy is when Shanice, which is supposed to be Uncle Buck's girlfriend, and she walks in the house and Uncle Buck is dancing with uh, the neighbor, which is Marcy, which is Lori Metcalf. And they're having this dancing scene and you can hear in the background that they're kind of like laughing and talking to each other. But Lori calls Buck by the actor's real name. You can hear her say John, which is John Candy and not Buck. So if you're ever watching that in the uh, movie, look out for that little uh, error. It's kind of fun to find. Um, so that one was very, very noticeable. I, I discovered that one right away. The second one that I noticed, and I, I mean, I wasn't even really paying attention to it. I, it just kind of happened. It was when, uh, Uncle Buck and the kids, all three kids were at the bowling alley. And as Tia sitting there, um, the gross and disgusting guy, pal, comes and sits next to her and is trying to hit on her. And she's just not having it well at the same time while buck is helping Maisie, you know with her bowling shot you see in the long picture behind him and you see tia just sitting by herself you don't see pal sitting next to her so that's where there's a small discrepancy um and i looked up online and it looks like everyone else saw it too so it's a, it's a pretty pretty easy uh, mistake in that movie for that one of the things that I noticed is that in one of the first car rides to school, Uncle Buck's little uh, compass on his car was missing, but then it shows up later on. So now the car, as I mentioned earlier, which backfires and has like a whole bunch of billow of smoke and stuff. That was such a hilarious prop for the movie. The thing is, is it does have a couple spots where it doesn't do that. So typically when the car stops and he turns it off, the car just goes rumbles and then it puffs and makes the loud sound of smoke, right? But it didn't happen in a couple areas. The first time that Buck goes to his brother's house in the middle of the night, it actually doesn't do that. It doesn't rumble and then make the backfire sound. So that's the first time we 
see the car and it doesn't make that noise. The second time is when Buck is driving around looking for Tia and he finds her walking down the street. He stops the car, turns it off and goes talks to her, but the car doesn't backfire. So that was an interesting one too. So that's why there's a, a couple discrepancies. I mean, they're small. I mean, you've got to be really looking for it. I'm, I'm kind of someone who just accidentally always sees those inconsistencies. So, you know, it doesn't take away from the movie in any way, but it's always kind of fun if you're a big fan of it and then you find out this information later and you can kind of look for little little things like that to kind of look forward to. So one of the things I discovered about this movie was that there were two television remakes of this movie into a television show. Now, this was against John Hughes's wishes. He did not want this to go to television, but it did. And the first time it went was about a year, year and a half after the success of the movie. Because the movie made about $79 million, which was huge at the time. It was a big box office success. So they thought they would do a television show back in like 1990. The movie came out like in 1980. So about a year, uh, about a year later, they came out with a TV show called Uncle Buck. It starred Kevin Meany, who's a comedian. He's he's an actor. I saw I got to see the pilot of that show. And it is no wonder why that show did not continue. So it only lasted one season. And it was not good. The decided to make the premise of Uncle Buck that Uncle Buck was uh, the guardian of the kids because the kids' parents die in a car accident. I mean, that's sad. They make the parents die in a car accident in order for Bud to come and live with them. Anyways, that's the premise. The premise is that the kids are now orphans and he's the legal guardian. There's a catch to it. The mother of his sister-in-law um, is in charge of all the money that was left. And apparently there was a lot of money left. So she's in charge of the estate, that sort of thing. But the very cool thing is that the actress is Audrey Meadows. You know, she played Alice in The Honeymooners. So she does a really good job because she's a very seasoned actress. But uh, the show, the storyline, the plot, the, the acting, I mean, that just goes out the window from everybody else in the show. Uh, Audrey, she just hits it out of the park. She's believable. She's funny. She's sweet. She's endearing. But everybody else just was not hitting it. Plus, the other reason why I think it wouldn't make it is because the kids were just too obvious in terms of who they were. Like the little girl, Maisie, she was cute. She hit her marks, but she wasn't, she wasn't great. The teenager Tia, she was the worst. She was really bad. Kevin Meany, think he's funny, uh, but I think this wasn't the right role for him. It, I think it was just too soon after the movie Uncle Buck that you would associate the Uncle Buck character too much to John Candy. And so that comparison, he wouldn't be successful for. It. Plus, it was not believable that after the movie now all of a sudden the parents are dead so it I don't know and they don't really even explain too much about the parents being dead so you don't understand much about it and there's no real connection it's like okay your parents are dead let's all move on and go about our lives like it was brushed underneath the rug there so uh there was a lot that was not given and so again that TV show only ended up being on air for one season. I saw about two episodes of it and it was it was not good. It was not. But Audrey Meadows, she was great. Um, I would love to act with her, but apparently she's no longer alive. So there's that. Anywho, now the second Uncle Buck happened recently. It was in 2016. So I actually found all the episodes on Hulu. So I watched... I watched two episodes. I watched the pilot and I watched the, the next episode after that. And the pilot was really good. Okay. I, what I liked about the pilot was that they kind of summed up the whole movie, but in a modern way and they just changed things uh, a little differently. So it was really cool. They decided not to kill off the parents and have Uncle Buck be someone who's just kind of out of a job and 
having a struggle in life and having them live with them as a manny, meaning a man nanny. And the kids really loved Uncle Buck and they wanted him to live with them. And then the sister-in-law changes her mind about him and asks him to stay. So I saw the second episode thinking, oh, okay, we're going to go along the same lines as what the first episode was. We're going to kind of continue the character. What ends up happening is that the pilot just addresses the movie and then the second episode is just a sitcom. It, it has nothing to do with episode one or the pilot and it, it starts going off in a direction of, oh, let's just do a sitcom. And that show didn't last more than one season either. It had some great actors and acting in it, but it really just didn't go anywhere. And it's a shame because... Um, it, it really had some potential there. One of the things I would say about the 2016 version was that the kids were absolutely not a match for that show. Not a match uh, between their acting, their age. So like Tia and Miles were not the right ages. Uh, Tia, I, technically, I think she was. I, I think she was maybe about 14, 15, like maybe in real life. But uh, she was not pulling her scenes and the writing for her was not great either. So I don't want to fully blame a, a teenage actor. I just don't think the lines were all that great for her. But at the same time, I, I think she could have had a little bit more in terms of, of her acting and what she could have done with the role. I, I think she could have developed it a little bit more. Instead, she was just two emotions she was either happy or she was yelling so uh it just it didn't quite work out for me because even in the movie and even the previous tv show miles was closer in age to Maisie, and in this particular remake of the tv show miles is much older i'd say he was about 10 or 11 you know so there was a little bit of an age difference plus they made him snarky which in the movie, Miles was not snarky. He was smart and had dry humor, which is different than snarky. Snarky has an attitude and meaning behind it. And I don't feel that when Macaulay did his character, he had any of that. He had like a dry sense of humor and that's what he brought and it it was a great match to john candy so seeing this young kid in the second version of the remake of uncle buck he wasn't quite hitting it and i think that's kind of my issue too with children actors when they make them too snarky i don't think parents would typically put up with that and if they are i mean that's on them but i i think like it doesn't translate to real life and they were trying to make the second version a little bit more realistic to real life and make it a sitcom. So I just didn't think it worked. So yeah, overall, I think the second remake of Uncle Buck in 2016, it just didn't hit the mark between the, the lack of like chemistry and casting of those kids and the reason why Uncle Buck was there. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't meshing and I don't know if people were just, I don't know if people were far removed from the movie enough to believe all this. I mean, it, it had the potential there. It just, the writing just wasn't there. That's all I can say. It's just, I think the adult acting was good. I just, the storylines and the the scenes, they, they just weren't hitting it. So I, I wish it did because it definitely had the potential, but it, it just wasn't hitting the marks. So let's talk a little bit about the actors of this movie. My favorite actor, of course, is going to be John Candy. And I think it's all of our favorite character is John Candy's role of Uncle Buck. Now, you're going to be surprised. There were other people up for this part. Uh, are you going to be ready for this? Okay. John Candy was not the first one. It was Danny DeVito, Chevy Chase, Robin Williams, and Jack Nicholson. Oh my God, can you imagine Jack Nicholson doing this role? That actually would have been really funny. But I, I cannot imagine anybody else doing it. I mean, maybe Robin Williams. Yeah, I mean, Robin Williams would have been really fun to have seen do this role. And, and he would have kind of fit. But I think what John Candy can do that 
Robin Williams cannot do is John Candy, just by his own looks and his body structure and all that, I feel like he gave this part a lot of heartwarming characteristics that I don't think Robin Williams can do. Now, Robin Williams could do some heartwarming stuff because he did that in Mrs. Doubtfire. I think it would have been a little bit too different than the way John Candy did it. Robin Williams, I think he had that heartwarming type of thing, but back in 1989, I don't think he was settled down enough to actually bring that out yet because Mrs. Doubtfire comes out later and that's when he's able to pull it out. So I think back in 1989 when this movie came out, I don't think Robin Williams quite had that quality and characteristic yet. I think he developed that later on and I think John Candy was the most perfect person for the role. Now, as I mentioned, like Danny DeVito, It does kind of make sense that Danny DeVito would have been considered for Uncle Buck because he kind of had that type of um, feeling back in the day. I mean, he was doing movies like Twins and um, all sorts of movies where he was a little bit of a shady character, but he was kind of heartwarming or he changed his mind and did heartwarming things. So he was already in that spot back then. So I can see why they would consider it. But John Hughes had already worked with, and I'm sorry, John Hughes is the director and writer of this this movie. John Hughes already worked with John Candy on planes, trains, and automobiles and had really wanted him to do this role. So when John Candy came in and was secured for the part, John Hughes came in and rewrote a bunch of scenes to kind of fit John Candy a little bit more. Plus, the one thing about John Hughes is he allows his actors to do improv scenes and he allows his actors to kind of rewrite things. And that is the greatest thing about this movie. There are plenty of scenes where they are rewriting it and they're redoing it. So they filmed a lot of these scenes at an abandoned high school. Okay, they even had the set of the house inside the gym, that sort of thing. So there's a scene that's improv with John Candy and he goes into the boys restroom and the the little uh, urinals are so much shorter than John Candy and he's got to try to pee in one of those things. And that's a real improv uh, scene. He had asked John if he could do it. He thought it'd be funny and it made it into the movie. It was really funny. I mean, John Candy was six foot something, you know, this big tall dude trying to pee in a little teeny urinal was so funny and it was so cute and I'm glad they kept it in there. This movie actually has a longer version and like all John Hughes's movies, there is a longer version because um, he wants to be able to cut out and not have to add back in. And that's actually kind of smart that you, you give more to the movie and then he just takes out what he needs. So there's longer versions of all the scenes and uh, there's a lot taken out and I got to see some of the uh, online uh, bloopers and lines and scenes that were cut you know to help make the movie one of the things that was cut that was really surprising and it would have added to the movie so much was the character Miles um, Miles had um, a whole backstory where he's kind of getting bullied at school You know, remember Uncle Buck was giving him all these crazy lunches with like a mayonnaise jar of milk and a pickled egg or pickled tomato, I think it was, and a weird sandwich and some sardines. Well, what ended up happening in the longer version is that Miles' character, every day he'd come and the kids were just going, wow, they'd start gathering around him more and more to see what things he was taking out of his lunch. So... Miles' character was getting more and more popular because of all these crazy and weird lunches that Uncle Buck was giving him. Now, the other thing that was happening that was longer scene was the scene where it was Miles' birthday and there was like five boys that showed up and a clown arrives. What was supposed to happen was that Uncle Buck, he punches out the clown and the clown goes back to his mouse car. But in the extended scene, they start rolling around the grass, they're fighting, they're having all sorts of arguments and fist fighting, and then the clown tries to leave in the car and he 
pulls off like the tail. All the kids inside are just crammed up by the window and they're all excited seeing Uncle Bug, you know, beat the crap out of the clown. And Miles goes to school on Monday and all the kids find out about it and he becomes an even bigger hero because now all the kids feel like they missed out because they didn't see the uncle beat up the clown. So there was this huge, long, extended story about Miles and it's a shame that that didn't make it into the movie or into the cut because that would have given Miles' character a little bit more dimension. But they ended up focusing a little bit more on Tia, which is fine because those scenes were equally as funny and not disappointing in any kind of way. Now, I was talking about john candy's background and got a little distracted here with the movie so i just wanted to add a little bit more about john's background he was from second city comedy and from second city comedy they created a tv show called sctv which is second comedy television and that was a great show because a lot of actors come out of it but john candy of course you know was another actor who came out of that and was very very funny i just loved that show i remember watching it here and there growing up on black and white tv um and so to have seen him evolve and become a pretty famous actor was really great because he deserved all the credit of being a hilarious comedian and actor that you can possibly give because he's very funny so one of the fun and just interesting things that I found out about John Candy's background was that he gave his voice to the animated movie Heavy Metal. He did multiple voices in that. And I had no idea that was like mind blown, right? I mean, did you know that? I, I didn't know that at all. So I was just blown away that he did that. Now, I looked up to whether or not he had children. He has two children, a daughter and a son. His daughter looks identical to him, identical. She's very pretty, but she looks exactly like him and it's very sweet. They do lots of like memorials for him, whether it's like for his video and, and acting career or comedy or old friends. They're kind of still involved with his, his acting and comedy career. So it's, it's very sweet. They're, they seem like very nice kids. Actually, they're adults, so sorry about that. And I think the saddest thing to find out about John Candy is that, you know, he, he died at an early age. He was about 38. And unfortunately, he, he died of some heart complications. So, but I'm glad to see that his family is still there and they're still supporting his life and career. So let's talk a little bit more about some of the other actors in the film. Amy Madigan, who played Shanice, which was Uncle Buck's girlfriend. Um, I was so curious about her. Um, she has a huge acting background. She still very actively acts. Um, she has hundreds of credits. Law and Order. Um, and she's in a current TV show called Penny Dreadful. I mean, she is everywhere. I mean, just about everywhere. Almost any TV show you can mention, she's she's been in it. So great for her that she's still acting. Um, she's still putting herself out there. And I appreciate that. And she's a great actress, by the way. So Jean Louisa Kelly, who played Tia, I wanted to know, where did this angsty teenager go? Well, um, you're not going to believe this, but she has and still has a huge acting career. She is, she has hundreds of credits. She was the star of one of the shows called Yes, Dear. And I watched that show uh, when it was on and I'm like, oh my gosh, that was her. I didn't realize that. But yeah, she was one of the, the lead uh, actresses in that show. Uh, the character's name was Kim Warner. So I was really shocked to, to realize that that was her. I mean, she, she did a great job and she did a great job as a teenage actress being that angsty. When a child actor can emote a feeling from you, such as like anger or hate or disgust or any, anything or any actor who, who can do that to you, that is a good actor because that's what you want. And as a teenager, she was just disgustingly angsty, wasn't she? I mean, she was just mad and she was pissy and she was eye rolling and she had attitude in her voice. And she was able to carry that off as the role of Tia. And I think she did a really, really good job. And to be honest, the other Tias that they did in the TV shows, they could not match her. She was definitely authentic and original to that character. And she really brought that character to life. So 
I'm so happy to see that she's still going strong as an actor. She's still really funny when she needs to be, and she can be serious when she wants to be, and she's doing great. So hats off to her. So Gabby Hoffman, who played Maisie, she's had a beautiful and wonderful career as an actor. She's still going very strong. She is in shows called Girls. She was in a show called Transparent, and she's currently in a TV show called Winning Season. And let me tell you something, that show is still going strong. In fact, I just recently auditioned for them. So I didn't get the role, but I recently auditioned for them. So just think I could have had like a one degree of separation of meeting her. So that would have been cool. So Macaulay Culkin is definitely a, a very huge star that came out of this movie. John Hughes loved Macaulay so much. He he legitimately wrote Home Alone just for him. And I kind of mentioned that before, but John Hughes just really saw the potential in Macaulay and wrote Home Alone. And my goodness, Home Alone is that great Christmas movie we all want to see. And more stars came out of that movie too. Kathleen O'Hara, which she was another SCTV member, came out of that. And that was a, a great movie that showcased so many other actresses and actors in that. So one of the scenes that John Hughes copied from Uncle Buck to Home Alone was that cute little scene where Macaulay is looking through the little um, mail slot at uh, Shanice and he's kind of questioning her, asking for a driver's license and all this type of stuff. Remember that cute little scene in Uncle Buck? They kind of mimic that in Home Alone where he's looking through the door flap at the two burglars that are trying to come in. So so that, you can tell, was a, a very copied, similar scene. In fact, some of the promos for Home Alone shows Macaulay's eyes through the mail slot. So to me, that is identical, but it, it was very cute. So I still no disagreement with that. Now, getting back to Macaulay and him as an actor, I mean, Home Alone definitely catapulted him into into fame. I mean, back then in the early 90s, that's when child actors were really just starting to boom out and, and make more movies and do more. You know, you had Mary Kate and Ashley back then, you had Macaulay. So it was all part of that like era where little kid actors were becoming big. And Macaulay was right there. He was part of that, you know, in crowd of little kids. He did a great job in this movie. You can see the potential in him and he was a great actor. There was nothing that he did was wrong. He had great timing. He memorized his speech well. You know, he was a little, little kid too. He was very young at the time, but just had a, a great sense of humor. And that's what he brought. He brought a very dry sense of humor for a little kid. Can you imagine a little kid having dry sense of humor? But he did. I imagine sometimes that that's how Norm MacDonald must have been like as a little kid, you know? Remember Norm MacDonald from SNL and... Anyways, so I wanted to bring Lori Metcalf into the equation here, even though she was kind of like a supportive character. She was not a main character. You could see Lori's comedy acting chops in this movie. I mean, she went for it. She allowed for all this stuff to happen. She had longer versions of her character in this movie, too, that got cut. One of them was when she's at the grocery store, she runs into John Candy, and she admits her feelings for him. But that scene only made it to the trailer. It actually did not make it to uh, the movie. So we actually never see that scene in the movie. But Laurie Metcalf's character, oh, it was so funny. She is Marcy Dahl Green Frosh. It's hyphen Frost. And people compliment her on, oh my gosh, she was so funny. I cannot get over how funny she was. And, you know, like even when she first kind of comes up to Uncle Buck and she's just kind of looking at him and, and she's acting with one eye, just being funny with the eye. I mean, that's acting. You can make people laugh with just one eye. I mean, oh, very, very funny. And all of her scenes, like her dancing scenes were really funny. I, I really loved Lori Metcalf's character in this. And it, we all know she went on to do so, so many things, you know, and I'm just so grateful to see her and her very early start. I mean, she absolutely had it. And it's no wonder why she's had a phenomenal career. And of course, she's still very active as an actor. So 
Now, Jay Underwood has to get some mention here. Jay Underwood was Bug, the actor who played Bug, the the teenager. And he kind of was a teenage heartthrob at the time. He played in a lot of movies, like The Boy Who Could Fly, Not Quite Human. And he ends up being in Star Trek Voyager later on, just for like one episode. But he had phenomenal talent um you could see as him playing this role as a snarky teenager he did really good i mean we all believed he was a jerk and kind of a douchebag but then when it comes down to it he's just a wimpy kid who doesn't want to be tortured by uncle buck in the back of his trunk i mean who wouldn't but he was great he was really great and his career really took off for a while i wanted to see where he went with his career you know i wanted to see what he had done. He has a long career of acting. Um, He ended up doing some other things off to the side. I believe he got into religion a little bit. And um, he still continues to act, which is phenomenal. He doesn't quite look the same anymore. So that was really surprising. He shaved off all of his head and just kind of has a goatee. So he didn't have that beautiful 80s feathery hair anymore, you know, so kind of miss that. The one really cool thing I found out about him is him and I, we are only two months apart. Exactly. Exactly. We are exactly two months apart. So I was really excited to find out that because he was one of my favorite actors growing up. I do remember him. I remember the movies he was in, Not Quite Human, uh, the, The Boy Who Could Fly. So I do remember those movies. I remember liking him. And I'm, I'm glad to see that he still has a good career going. So overall, I mean, the movie is great. It's a great, it's a great reminder of the late 80s, early 90s, how people were. Um, the character Uncle Buck is so charming and he's so heartwarming, even though he's a big goof, you know, his life is just full of mistakes. He's very... He's very much of a a warm, loving uncle because don't forget there's this one part where he had this great gambling tip and he had no one to watch Maisie and Miles and he throws them in the back seat of his car and he's sitting there and he sees the kids in the mirror. He realizes that he cannot go and take these kids to like a gambling place um, because that's not the right thing to do. So when they wrote this movie, they gave... Uncle Buck some redeeming qualities, you know, and that was one of them. And that's when you realize, oh, he kind of grew up. He realized his own moral dilemma and knew not to bring the two little kids to a gambling place. So the movie overall, it, it flows really well. It follows the three act play. It does have an all hope is lost moment. The all hope is lost moment is when Tia realizes her boyfriend's cheating on her and she's walking the street and uncle buck comes to find her that's an all hope is lost it doesn't have to happen to the main character but she was one of the main characters if that makes any sense uncle buck going after her after he realizes that her boyfriend's cheating on him that's where the all hope is lost and then the team comes back together and rallies around her when she opens the trunk and sees Bug laying there and realizes that he's tied up because of Uncle Buck. So it's a a very lovable, heartwarming type of movie. I don't think it would have held well with a sequel. I don't think that would be possible. So I think that's why the television shows didn't work because there's an aftermath of Uncle Buck. And the aftermath of Uncle Buck would have been that he went home He married Shanice and they started a family. So that's what the next line of of the movie would have been. So bringing it to TV wouldn't work because Uncle Buck had to have an ending in TV, if that makes any sense. So because he didn't have any ending and he didn't have Shanice with him. In the TV episodes, there was no Shanice. There was in the 2016, but she leaves them and that's it. Overall, it's great to remember some of these movies. And you know what? That movie would hold up today. There was there was no bad jokes. There was no racy jokes. There was no inappropriateness. There may have been. Maybe I missed it. You can always comment below if I did. But I think it would hold up today. And I feel like it was very G-rated, even though there was alcohol involved. I think the, the warning on my screen showed, oh, there's alcohol involved in, in some language. It's like, really? Okay, well, still pretty mild. I didn't see anything. Oh, smoking. That was the other one. 
I didn't see too much of of anything that wouldn't hold up today. I think it still would hold up today. And it's a very cute movie. And it's too bad that John Candy couldn't do more movies like that. He did a total of six during the peak of his career until he passed away. And this was one of my favorites from him. We should probably start looking into some of the other ones he'd done. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles was a great movie. I should probably go back and, and see that one as well. Anyways, I'm so glad you guys came along for the ride today. It makes me so happy to talk about these old movies with you. If you have an idea of an old movie that you would like for me to review or talk about, please put some comments down below. I would love to see them. In the meantime, please don't forget to subscribe because otherwise I'm just filming these for myself and then it just seems like I'm talking to myself and filming it at the same time. So hit that subscribe button for me. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been Ladies on a Roll.